The descendants of Adam were Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah, the sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Tagarma. The descendants of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim. The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The descendants of Cush were Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, and Saptika. The descendants of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Mizraim was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Leobites, Naphtuhites. Pathrasites, Caslahites, and the Kaphtarites, from whom the Philistines came. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites. Jebusites, Amorites, Jurgishites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. The descendants of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram, the descendants of Aram were Uzi, Hull, Gether, and Mash. Arphaxad was the father of Shelah, Shelah was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Pelet, which means, division, for during his lifetime the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the ancestor of Almadad, Shalef, Hazarmaveth, Jera, Hadaram, Yusel, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havila, and Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. So this is the family line descended from Shem, Arphaxad, Shelah, Eber, Pelag, Ru, Sarag, Nahar, Tura, and Abram, later known as Abraham. The sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. These are their genealogical records. The sons of Ishmael were Nebaioth, the oldest, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jetur, Nafish, and Kadima. These were the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, were Zimran, Jokshan, Madon, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. The sons of Jokshan were Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephor, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were descendants of Abraham through his concubine Keturah. Abraham was the father of Isaac. The sons of Isaac were Esau and Israel. The sons of Esau were Eliphaz, Ruel, Jush, Jalam, and Korah. The descendants of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, Kenas, and Amalek, who was born to Timnah. The descendants of Ruel were Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. The descendants of Seir were Lotan, Shobal, Zibian, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. The descendants of Lotan were Hori and Hemam. Lotan's sister was named Timna. The descendants of Shobal were Alvan, Manahath, Ebel, Shepho, and Onam. The descendants of Zibian were Aya and Anna. The son of Anna was Dishan, the descendants of Dishan were Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Karen. The descendants of Ezer were Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan, the descendants of Dishan were Uzi and Aaron. These are the kings who ruled in the land of Edom before any king ruled over the Israelites, Bela son of Beer, who ruled from his city of Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab son of Zerah from Basra became king in his place. When Jobab died, 
Husham from the land of the Temanites became king in his place. When Husham died, Hadad son of Bedad became king in his place and ruled from the city of Avith. He was the one who destroyed the Midianite army in the land of Moab. When Hadad died, Samla from the city of Masrika became king in his place. When Samla died, Shal from the city of Rehoboth on the river became king in his place. When Shal died, Balhanan son of Akbar became king in his place. When Balhanan died, Hadad became king in his place and ruled from the city of Pau. His wife was Mehetabal, the daughter of Matrid and granddaughter of Mizahab. Then Hadad died, the clan leaders of Edom were Timna, Alva, Jetheth, Ohalabama, Elah, Pinion, Kenas, Taman, Mibzer, Magdil, and Iram. These are the clan leaders of Edom. The sons of Israel were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Judah had three sons from Bathswa, a Canaanite woman. Their names were Er, Onan, and Shelah. But the Lord saw that the oldest son, Er, was a wicked man, so he killed him. Later Judah had twin sons from Tamar, his widowed daughter-in-law. Their names were Perez and Zerah. So Judah had five sons in all. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamel. The sons of Zerah were Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calcal, and Darda, five in all. The son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri, was Achan, who brought disaster on Israel by taking plunder that had been set apart for the Lord. The son of Ethan was Azariah. The sons of Hezron were Jeremiel, Ram, and Caleb. Ram was the father of Ammonadab. Ammonadab was the father of Nashon, a leader of Judah. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse's first son was Eliab, his second was Abinadab, his third was Shermaiah. His fourth was Nethanel, his fifth was Raddai. His sixth was Ozem, and his seventh was David. Their sisters were named Zeruiah and Abigail. Zeruiah had three sons named Abishai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail married a man named Jether, an Ishmaelite, and they had a son named Amasa. Hezron's son Caleb had sons from his wife Azuba and from Jerioth. Her sons were named Jesher, Shobab, and Arden. After Azuba died, Caleb married Ephratha, and they had a son named her. Her was the father of Uri. Uri was the father of Bezalel. When Hezron was sixty years old, he married Gilead's sister, the daughter of Machir. They had a son named Segub. Segub was the father of Jair, who ruled twenty-three towns in the land of Gilead. But Geshur and Aram captured the towns of Jair and also took Kanath and its sixty surrounding villages. All these were descendants of Machir, the father of Gilead. Soon after Hezron died in the town of Caleb Ephratha, his wife Abijah gave birth to a son named Ashur, the father of Tico. The sons of Jeremiel, the oldest son of Hezron, were Ram, the firstborn, Buna, Oren, Ozem, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had a second wife named Adra. She was the mother of Onam. The sons of Ram, the oldest son of Jeremiel, were Maz, Jamin, 
and Eker. The sons of Onam were Shammai and Jada, the sons of Shammai were Nadab and Abishur. The sons of Abishur and his wife Abihail were Aben and Malad. The sons of Nadab were Sealed and Apaim. Sealed died without children. But Apaim had a son named Ishi. The son of Ishi was Shishan. Shishan had a descendant named Alay. The sons of Jada, Shammai's brother, were Jether and Jonathan. Jether died without children. But Jonathan had two sons named Peleth and Zaza, these were all descendants of Jeremiel. Shishan had no sons, though he did have daughters. He also had an Egyptian servant named Jarha. Shishan gave one of his daughters to be the wife of Jarha, and they had a son named Atai. Atai was the father of Nathan. Nathan was the father of Zabad. Zabad was the father of Ephlo. Ephlo was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jehu. Jehu was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Helez. Helez was the father of Elisa. Elisa was the father of Sismai. Sismai was the father of Shalom. Shalom was the father of Jechemiah. Jechemiah was the father of Elishama. The descendants of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiel, included Misha, the firstborn, who became the father of Ziph. Caleb's descendants also included the sons of Mershah, the father of Hebron. The sons of Hebron were Korah, Tapua, Rechem, and Shema. Shema was the father of Raim. Raim was the father of Jorkim. Rechem was the father of Shammai. The son of Shammai was Mayan. Mayan was the father of Bethzur. Caleb's concubine Ephah gave birth to Haran, Moza, and Gazes. Haran was the father of Gazes. The sons of Jadai were Regem, Jotham, Gashan, Pelet, Ephah, and Shaph. Another of Caleb's concubines, Maka, gave birth to Sheber and Tirana. She also gave birth to Shaph, the father of Madman Na, and Shiva, the father of Macbina and Jibia. Caleb also had a daughter named Aksa. These were all descendants of Caleb, the sons of her, the oldest son of Caleb's wife Ephrathah, were Shobal, the founder of Kiriath Jerim. Salma, the founder of Bethlehem, and Hereth, the founder of Beth Gader. The descendants of Shobal, the founder of Kiriath Jerim, were Hero, half the Manahathites. And the families of Kiriath Jerim, the Ethrites, Puthites, Shumathites, and Mishrates, from whom came the people of Zorah and Eshtael. The descendants of Salma were the people of Bethlehem, the Netophathites, Atroth Beth Joab, the other half of the Manahathites, the Zorites. And the families of scribes living at Jabez, the Tirathites, Shimathites, and Sukathites. All these were Kenite who descended from Hamath, the father of the family of Rechab. These are the sons of David who were born in Hebron, the oldest was Amnon, whose mother was a Hinom from Jezreel. The second was Daniel, whose mother was Abigail from Carmel. The third was Absalom, whose mother was Maka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth was Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith. The fifth was Shephatiah, whose mother was Abital. The sixth was Ithrim, whose mother was Egla, David's wife. These six sons were born to David in Hebron, where he reigned seven and a half years, then David reigned another thirty-three years in Jerusalem.
The sons born to David in Jerusalem included Shammua, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. Their mother was Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel. David also had nine other sons, Ibhar, Elishua, Elplet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. These were the sons of David, not including his sons born to his concubines. Their sister was named Tamar. The descendants of Solomon were Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Ahaziah, Josh, Amaziah, Aziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Ammon, and Josiah. The sons of Josiah were Johanan, the oldest, Jehoiakim, the second, Zedekiah, the third, and Jehoahaz, the fourth. The successors of Jehoiakim were his son Jehoiakim and his brother Zedekiah. The sons of Jehoiakim, who was taken prisoner by the Babylonians, were Shealtiel, Malkiram, Padiah, Shenazer, Jechemiah, Hashemah, and Nedabiah. The sons of Padiah were Zerubbabel and Shimi, the sons of Zerubbabel were Meshullam and Hananiah. Their sister was Shelemith. His five other sons were Hashubah, Ohol, Barakiah, Hasadiah, and Jushabhezd. The sons of Hananiah were Pelatiah and Jeshaiah. Jeshaiah's son was Rephaiah. Rephaiah's son was Arnon. Arnon's son was Obadiah. Obadiah's son was Shechaniah. The descendants of Shechaniah were Shemaiah and his sons, Hadash, Egal, Bariah, Neariah, and Shaphat, six in all. The sons of Neariah were Elioenai, Hiskia, and Azrakam, three in all. The sons of Elioenai were Hodaviah, Eliashib, Peliah, Akub, Johanan, Deliah, and Anani, seven in all. The descendants of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. Shobal's son Rhea was the father of Jehoth. Jehoth was the father of Ahumai and Lahad. These were the families of the Zorathites. The descendants of Etam were Jezreel, Ishma, Idbash, their sister Hazelponi. Penul, the father of Geder, and Ezer, the father of Husha. These were the descendants of her, the firstborn of Ephratha, the ancestor of Bethlehem. Ashur, the father of Tico, had two wives, named Hela and Nara. Nara gave birth to Ahuzam, Hefer, Temani, and Hahashtari. Hela gave birth to Zerath, Izar, Ethnan. And Kaz, who became the ancestor of Anub, Zobiba, and all the families of Aharhel son of Haram. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do, and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. Kalub, the brother of Shuha, was the father of Mihir. Mihir was the father of Eshton. Eshton was the father of Beth Rapha, Pasea, and Tehina. Tehina was the father of Iarnahash. These were the descendants of Rika. The sons of Kenas were Othniel and Sariah. Othniel's sons were Hathath and Meonothai. Meonothai was the father of Ophra. Sariah was the father of Joab, the founder of the Valley of Craftsmen, so called because they were craftsmen. The sons of Caleb son of Jephunneh were Iru, Elah, and Nam. The son of Elah was Kenas. The sons of Jehalalel were Ziph, Zipha, Tyria, and Asarel. The sons of Ezra were Jether, Mird, Ephor, and Jalen. 
One of Mird's wives became the mother of Miriam, Shammai, and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoa. He married a woman from Judah, who became the mother of Jared, the father of Geder, Heber, the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zenoah. Mird also married Bithia, a daughter of Pharaoh, and she bore him children. Hodiah's wife was the sister of Naam. One of her sons was the father of Kila the Garmite, and another was the father of Eshtemoa the Machathite. The sons of Shimon were Amnon, Rinna, Ben-Hanan, and Tylan, the descendants of Ishi were Zoheth and Ben-Zoheth. Shelah was one of Judah's sons. The descendants of Shelah were Er, the father of Lika, Lada, the father of Mershah, the families of linen workers at Beth Ashbi. Jochim, the men of Koziba, and Josh and Seraph, who ruled over Moab and Jeshubileam. These names all come from ancient records. They were the pottery makers who lived in Netaim and Gedera. They lived there and worked for the king. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Jerib, Zohar, and Shal. The descendants of Shal were Shalom, Mipsam, and Mishma. The descendants of Mishma were Hamuel, Zachar, and Shimi. Shimi had sixteen sons and six daughters, but none of his brothers had large families. So Simeon's tribe never grew as large as the tribe of Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Malada, Hazar Shul, Bilha, Ezem, Tolad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazar Susim, Beth Bairi, and Sharaim. These towns were under their control until the time of King David. Their descendants also lived in Etam, Ein, Rimen, Tokin, and Ashen, five towns, and their surrounding villages as far away as Balath. This was their territory, and these names are listed in their genealogical records. Other descendants of Simeon included Meshabab, Jamlek, Joshua son of Amaziah, Joel, Jehu son of Joshabiah, son of Sariah, son of Aziel, Elioene, Jacoba, Jeshoheah, Asiah, Adiel, Jezamiel, Benaiah, and Ziza son of Shurfai, son of Alon, son of Jediah, son of Shimri, son of Shemaiah. These were the names of some of the leaders of Simeon's wealthy clans. Their families grew, and they traveled to the region of Gerar, in the east part of the valley, seeking pastureland for their flocks. They found lush pastures there, and the land was spacious, quiet, and peaceful, some of Ham's descendants had been living in that region. But during the reign of King Hezekiah of Judah, these leaders of Simeon invaded the region and completely destroyed the homes of the descendants of Ham and of the Munites. No trace of them remains today. They killed everyone who lived there and took the land for themselves, because they wanted its good pasture land for their flocks. Five hundred of these invaders from the tribe of Simeon went to Mount Seir, led by Pelatiah, Neariah, Rephaiah, and Uzziel, all sons of Ishi. They destroyed the few Amalekites who had survived, and they have lived there ever since. The oldest son of Israel was Reuben. But since he dishonored his father by sleeping with one of his father's concubines, his birthright was given to the sons of his brother Joseph. For this reason, Reuben is not listed in the genealogical records as the firstborn son. The descendants of Judah became the most powerful tribe and provided a ruler for the nation, but the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the oldest son of Israel, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel were Shemaiah, Gog, Shimi, Micah, Rhea, Baal, and Bera. Bera was the leader of the Reubenites when they were taken into captivity by King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria. 
Bira's relatives are listed in their genealogical records by their clans, Jeel, the leader, Zechariah. And Bela son of Azaz, son of Shema, son of Joel, the Reubenites lived in the area that stretches from Aroer to Nebo and Balmian. And since they had so many livestock in the land of Gilead, they spread east toward the edge of the desert that stretches to the Euphrates River. During the reign of Saul, the Reubenites defeated the Hagrites in battle. Then they moved into the Hagrite settlements all along the eastern edge of Gilead. Next to the Reubenites, the descendants of Gad lived in the land of Bashan as far east as Salika. Joel was the leader in the land of Bashan, and Shafam was second in command, followed by Janae and Shaphat. Their relatives, the leaders of seven other clans, were Michael, Meshullam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Zia, and Eber. These were all descendants of Abihail son of Huri, son of Jeroah, son of Gilead, son of Michael, son of Jeshishai, son of Jado, son of Buzz. Ahi son of Abdeel, son of Guni, was the leader of their clans. The Gadites lived in the land of Gilead, in Bashan and its villages, and throughout all the pasturelands of Sharon. All of these were listed in the genealogical records during the days of King Jotham of Judah and King Jeroboam of Israel. There were 44,760 capable warriors in the armies of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were all skilled in combat and armed with shields, swords, and bows. They waged war against the Hagrites, the Jeturites, the Naphishites, and the Notabites. They cried out to God during the battle, and He answered their prayer because they trusted in Him. So the Hagrites and all their allies were defeated. The plunder taken from the Hagrites included 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep and goats, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 captives. Many of the Hagrites were killed in the battle because God was fighting against them. The people of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh lived in their land until they were taken into exile. The half-tribe of Manasseh was very large and spread through the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, Sinir, and Mount Hermon. These were the leaders of their clans, Ephor, Ishi, Eliel, Osriel, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel. These men had a great reputation as mighty warriors and leaders of their clans. But these tribes were unfaithful to the God of their ancestors. They worshipped the gods of the nations that God had destroyed. So the God of Israel caused King Pool of Assyria, also known as Tiglath Pileser, to invade the land and take away the people of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh as captives. The Assyrians exiled them to Hala, Haber, Hara, and the Gozan River, where they remain to this day. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The descendants of Kohath included Umram, Izar, Hebron, and Uziel. The children of Umram were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam, the sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. Eliezer was the father of Phinehas. Phinehas was the father of Abishua. Abishua was the father of Bucky. Bucky was the father of Uzi. Uzi was the father of Zerahiah. Zerahiah was the father of Meraeth. Meraeth was the father of Amaria. Amaria was the father of Ahitub. Ahitub was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Ahamaz. Ahamaz was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Johanan. Johanan was the father of Azariah, the high priest at the temple built by Solomon in Jerusalem. Azariah was the father of Amaria. Amaria was the father of Ahitub. Ahitub was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Shalom. 
Shalom was the father of Hilkiah. Hilkiah was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Sariah. Sariah was the father of Jehozadak, who went into exile when the Lord sent the people of Judah and Jerusalem into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimi. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The descendants of Merari included Mali and Mushi, the following were the Levite clans, listed according to their ancestral descent. The descendants of Gershon included Libni, Jahath, Zima, Joa, Ido, Zira, and Jetherai. The descendants of Kohath included Amanadab, Korah, Asur, Elkanah, Abiasaph, Asur, Tahath, Oriel, Aziah, and Shal. The descendants of Elkanah included Amasai, Ahimoth, Elkanah, Zophai, Nahath, Eliab, Jeraham, Elkanah, and Samuel. The sons of Samuel were Joel, the older, and Abijah, the second. The descendants of Merari included Mali, Libni, Shimi, Uzzah, Shermeah, Haggaiah, and Asiah. David assigned the following men to lead the music at the house of the Lord after the ark was placed there. They ministered with music at the tabernacle until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They carried out their work, following all the regulations handed down to them. These are the men who served, along with their sons, Heman the musician was from the clan of Kohath. His genealogy was traced back through Joel, Samuel, Elkanah, Jeraham, Eliel, Toa, Zuth, Elkanah, Mahath, Amasai, Elkanah, Joel, Azariah, Zephaniah, Tahath, Asur, Abiasaph, Korah, Izar, Kohath, Levi, and Israel. Heman's first assistant was Azaph from the clan of Gershon. Azaph's genealogy was traced back through Berechiah, Shermeah, Michael, Basia, Malkija, Ethni, Zira, Adeya, Ethan, Zima, Shimi, Jahath, Gershon, and Levi. Heman's second assistant was Ethan from the clan of Merari. Ethan's genealogy was traced back through Kishi, Abdi, Malak, Hashabiah, Amaziah, Hilkiah, Amzi, Bani, Shemer, Mali, Mushi, Merari, and Levi. Their fellow Levites were appointed to various other tasks in the tabernacle, the house of God. Only Aaron and his descendants served as priests. They presented the offerings on the altar of burnt offering and the altar of incense, and they performed all the other duties related to the most holy place. They made atonement for Israel by doing everything that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded them. The descendants of Aaron were Eliezer, Phinehas, Abishua, Bucky, Uzi, Zerahiah, Mareath, Amariah, Ahatub, Zadok, and Ahamaz. This is a record of the towns and territory assigned by means of sacred lots to the descendants of Aaron, who were from the clan of Kohath. This territory included Hebron and its surrounding pasturelands in Judah. But the fields and outlying areas belonging to the city were given to Caleb son of Jephunneh. So the descendants of Aaron were given the following towns, each with its pasturelands, Hebron, a city of refuge, Libna, Jadar, Eshtemoa, Holon, Debir, Ein, Judah, and Beth Shemesh. And from the territory of Benjamin they were given Gibeon, Geba, Elmeth, and Anathoth, each with its pasturelands. 
so thirteen towns were given to the descendants of Aaron. The remaining descendants of Kohath received ten towns from the territory of the half-tribe of Manasseh by means of sacred lots. The descendants of Gershon received by sacred lots thirteen towns from the territories of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and from the Bashan area of Manasseh, east of the Jordan. The descendants of Merari received by sacred lots twelve towns from the territories of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the people of Israel assigned all these towns and pasturelands to the Levites. The towns in the territories of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin, mentioned above, were assigned to them by means of sacred lots. The descendants of Kohath were given the following towns from the territory of Ephraim, each with its pasturelands. Shechem, a city of refuge in the hill country of Ephraim, Gezer. Jachmim, Beth Horon, Ijalan, and Gath Rimen. The remaining descendants of Kohath were assigned the towns of Aner and Bilim from the territory of the half tribe of Manasseh, each with its pasturelands. The descendants of Gershon received the towns of Golan, in Bashan, and Ashtaroth from the territory of the half tribe of Manasseh, each with its pasturelands. From the territory of Issachar, they were given Kadesh, Dabarath, Ramath, and Anam, each with its pasturelands. From the territory of Asher, they received Mishal, Abdon, Hukok, and Rehob, each with its pasturelands. From the territory of Naphtali, they were given Kadesh in Galilee, Haman, and Kiriathane, each with its pasturelands. The remaining descendants of Merari received the towns of Jachmim, Karta, Rimen, and Tabor from the territory of Zebulun, each with its pasturelands. From the territory of Reuben, east of the Jordan River opposite Jericho, they received Bezer, a desert town, Jahaz, Kedemoth, and Mephath, each with its pasturelands. And from the territory of Gad, they received Ramath in Gilead, Mahanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer, each with its pasturelands. The four sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Tola were Uzi, Rephaia, Jeriel, Jamai, Ipsum, and Shemuel. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. At the time of King David, the total number of mighty warriors listed in the records of these clans was 22,600. The son of Uzi was Israhiah. The sons of Israhiah were Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishia. These five became the leaders of clans. All of them had many wives and many sons, so the total number of men available for military service among their descendants was 36,000. The total number of mighty warriors from all the clans of the tribe of Issachar was 87,000. All of them were listed in their genealogical records. Three of Benjamin's sons were Bela, Becker, and Gedeal. The five sons of Bela were Esben, Uzi, Uziel, Jeremoth, and Iri. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. The total number of mighty warriors from these clans was 22,034, as listed in their genealogical records. The sons of Becker were Zamira, Josh, Eliezer, Elioenai, Omri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Aelmeth. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. The total number of mighty warriors and leaders from these clans was 20,200, as listed in their genealogical records. The son of Gedeal was Bilhan. The sons of Bilhan were Jush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kanana, Zethan, Tarshish, and Ahishahar. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. From these clans the total number of mighty warriors ready for war was 17,200. The sons of Ir were Shuppim and Huppim. 
Hushim was the son of Ahir. The sons of Naphtali were Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shilam, they were all descendants of Jacob's concubine Bilha. The descendants of Manasseh through his Aramean concubine included Israel. She also bore Makir, the father of Gilead. Makir found wives for Huppim and Shuppim. Makir had a sister named Maka. One of his descendants was Zila Fihad, who had only daughters. Makir's wife, Maka, gave birth to a son whom she named Paresh. His brother's name was Sheresh. The sons of Paresh were Ulam and Rakim. The son of Ulam was Bedan. All these were considered Gileadites, descendants of Makir son of Manasseh. Makir's sister Hamilketh gave birth to Ishhad, Abizer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahian, Shechem, Leki, and Anium. The descendants of Ephraim were Shuthala, Baird, Tahath, Elida, Tahath. Zabad, Shuthala, Ezer, and Elid. These two were killed trying to steal livestock from the local farmers near Gath. Their father, Ephraim, mourned for them a long time, and his relatives came to comfort him. Afterward Ephraim slept with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Ephraim named him Bariah because of the tragedy his family had suffered. He had a daughter named Shira. She built the towns of Lower and Upper Beth Horon and Uzan Shira. The descendants of Ephraim included Repha, Reshef, Tela, Tain, Laden, Amahud, Elishama, Nun, and Joshua. The descendants of Ephraim lived in the territory that included Bethel and its surrounding towns to the south, Naran to the east, Gezer and its villages to the west, and Shechem and its surrounding villages to the north as far as Aya and its towns. Along the border of Manasseh were the towns of Bethshan, Tanakh, Megiddo, Dor, and their surrounding villages. The descendants of Joseph son of Israel lived in these towns. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah. They had a sister named Sarah. The sons of Bariah were Heber and Malkiel, the father of Berzaith. The sons of Heber were Japhlet, Shomer, and Hotham. They had a sister named Shua. The sons of Japhlet were Pasach, Bimho, and Ashvath. The sons of Shomer were Ahi, Roga, Hubba, and Aram. The sons of his brother Helem were Zopha, Imna, Shalesh, and Amal. The sons of Zopha were Sua, Harnifer, Shul, Beri, Imra, Bezer, Had, Shama, Shilsha, Ithran, and Bira. The sons of Jethur were Jephunneh, Pispa, and Ara. The sons of Ola were Ara, Haniel, and Rizia. Each of these descendants of Asher was the head of an ancestral clan. They were all select men, mighty warriors and outstanding leaders. The total number of men available for military service was 26,000, as listed in their genealogical records. Benjamin's first son was Bela, the second was Ashbel, the third was Ahara. The fourth was Noah, and the fifth was Rapha. The sons of Bela were Adar, Gera, Abihad, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shephaphan, and Huram. The sons of Ehud, leaders of the clans living at Geba, were exiled to Manahath. Ehud's sons were Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera. Gera, who led them into exile, was the father of Uzzah and Ahahud. After Shaharaim divorced his wives Hushim and Bara, he had children in the land of Moab. His wife Hodesh gave birth to Jobab, Zibia, Misha, Malcam, Juz, Sakia, and Mirma. 
These sons all became the leaders of clans. Shaharaim's wife Hushim had already given birth to Abitub and Elpal. The sons of Elpal were Eber, Mizham, Shemd, who built the towns of Ono and Lod and their nearby villages. Bariah, and Shema. They were the leaders of the clans living in Ijalan, and they drove out the inhabitants of Gath. Ahio, Shashak, Jerimoth. Zebediah, Arad, Eder. Michael, Ishpa, and Joha were the sons of Bariah. Zebediah, Meshullam, Hiski, Heber. Ishmarai, Isliah, and Jobab were the sons of Elpal. Jakim, Zikri, Zabdi. Elianai, Zilathai, Eliel. Adeya, Bariah, and Shimrath were the sons of Shimi. Ishpan, Eber, Eliel. Abdon, Zikri, Hanan. Hananiah, Elam, and Thithijah. Iftia, and Penel were the sons of Shashak. Shamshari, Shehariah, Athaliah. Jerashiah, Elijah, and Zikri were the sons of Jeraham. These were the leaders of the ancestral clans, they were listed in their genealogical records, and they all lived in Jerusalem. Jeel, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maka, and his oldest son was named Abdon. Jeel's other sons were Zur, Kish, Baal, Na, Nadab, Geder, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth, who was the father of Shimeim. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Na was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbal. Jonathan was the father of Meribbal. Meribbal was the father of Micah. Micah was the father of Pithon, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Elmeth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia. Binia was the father of Rephaia. Rephaia was the father of Elisa. Elisa was the father of Azel. Azel had six sons, Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Azel's brother Eshek had three sons, the first was Ulam, the second was Jush, and the third was Eliphlet. Ulam's sons were all mighty warriors and expert archers. They had many sons and grandsons, 150 in all, all these were descendants of Benjamin. So all Israel was listed in the genealogical records in the book of the kings of Israel, the people of Judah were exiled to Babylon because they were unfaithful to the Lord. The first of the exiles to return to their property in their former towns were priests, Levites, temple servants, and other Israelites. Some of the people from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh came and settled in Jerusalem. One family that returned was that of Uthai son of Amahad, son of Omri, son of Imri, son of Bani, a descendant of Perez son of Judah. Others returned from the Shilonite clan, including Isaiah, the oldest, and his sons. From the Zerahite clan, Jul returned with his relatives that I and all, 690 families from the tribe of Judah returned. From the tribe of Benjamin came Salus son of Meshullam, son of Hodaviah, son of Hasanua, Adibniah son of Jeraham, Elah son of Uzi, son of Micri, and Meshullam son of Shephatiah, son of Ruel, son of Abnijah. These men were all leaders of clans, and they were listed in their genealogical records. In all, 956 families from the tribe of Benjamin returned. Among the priests who returned were Jediah, Jehoiarib, Jachin, 
Azariah son of Hilkiah, son of Meshullam, son of Zadok, son of Meraith, son of Ahitab. Azariah was the chief officer of the house of God. Other returning priests were Adaiah son of Jeraham, son of Pashur, son of Malkijah, and Masai son of Adiel, son of Jazra, son of Meshullam, son of Meshulamith, son of Immer. In all, 1,760 priests returned. They were heads of clans and very able men. They were responsible for ministering at the house of God. The Levites who returned were Shemaiah son of Hashub, son of Azrakim, son of Hashabiah, a descendant of Merari. Bakbakar, Horesh, Galo, Matania son of Micah, son of Zikri, son of Azaph. Obadiah son of Shemaiah, son of Galo, son of Jeduthun, and Berechiah son of Asa, son of Elkanah, who lived in the area of Netapha. The gatekeepers who returned were Shalom, Akub, Talman, Ahiman, and their relatives. Shalom was the chief gatekeeper. Prior to this time, they were responsible for the king's gate on the east side. These men served as gatekeepers for the camps of the Levites. Shalom was the son of Korah, a descendant of Abiasaph, from the clan of Korah. He and his relatives, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the sanctuary, just as their ancestors had guarded the tabernacle in the camp of the Lord. Phinehas son of Eleazar had been in charge of the gatekeepers in earlier times, and the Lord had been with him. And later Zechariah son of Meshalemia was responsible for guarding the entrance to the tabernacle. In all, there were 212 gatekeepers in those days, and they were listed according to the genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel the seer had appointed their ancestors because they were reliable men. These gatekeepers and their descendants, by their divisions, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the house of the Lord when that house was a tent. The gatekeepers were stationed on all four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their relatives in the villages came regularly to share their duties for seven-day periods. The four chief gatekeepers, all Levites, were trusted officials, for they were responsible for the rooms and treasuries at the house of God. They would spend the night around the house of God, since it was their duty to guard it and to open the gates every morning. Some of the gatekeepers were assigned to care for the various articles used in worship. They checked them in and out to avoid any loss. Others were responsible for the furnishings, the items in the sanctuary, and the supplies, such as choice flour, wine, olive oil, frankincense, and spices. But it was the priests who blended the spices. Mattathiah, a Levite and the oldest son of Shalom the Korahite, was entrusted with baking the bread used in the offerings. And some members of the clan of Kohath were in charge of preparing the bread to be set on the table each Sabbath day. The musicians, all prominent Levites, lived at the temple. They were exempt from other responsibilities since they were on duty at all hours. All these men lived in Jerusalem. They were the heads of Levite families and were listed as prominent leaders in their genealogical records. Jeel, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maka. And his oldest son was named Abdon. Jeel's other sons were Zur, Kish, Baal, Na, Nadab, Geder, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shimeim. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Na was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbal. Jonathan was the father of Meribal. Meribal was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. 
Jada was the father of Elmeth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia. Binia's son was Rephaia. Rephaia's son was Elisa. Elisa's son was Azel. Azel had six sons, whose names were Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Now the Philistines attacked Israel, and the men of Israel fled before them. Many were slaughtered on the slopes of Mount Gilboa. The Philistines closed in on Saul and his sons, and they killed three of his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew very fierce around Saul, and the Philistine archers caught up with him and wounded him. Saul groaned to his armor-bearer, Take your sword and kill me before these pagan Philistines come to taunt and torture me. But his armor-bearer was afraid and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When his armor-bearer realized that Saul was dead, he fell on his own sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died there together, bringing his dynasty to an end. When all the Israelites in the Jezreel Valley saw that their army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their towns and fled. So the Philistines moved in and occupied their towns. The next day, when the Philistines went out to strip the dead, they found the bodies of Saul and his sons on Mount Gilboa. So they stripped off Saul's armor and cut off his head. Then they proclaimed the good news of Saul's death before their idols and to the people throughout the land of Philistia. They placed his armor in the temple of their gods, and they fastened his head to the temple of Dagon. But when everyone in Jabesh Gilead heard about everything the Philistines had done to Saul, all their mighty warriors brought the bodies of Saul and his sons back to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones beneath the great tree at Jabesh, and they fasted for seven days. So Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He failed to obey the Lord's command, and he even consulted a medium. Instead of asking the Lord for guidance. So the Lord killed him and turned the kingdom over to David son of Jesse. Then all Israel gathered before David at Hebron and told him, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even when Saul was king, you were the one who really led the forces of Israel. And the Lord your God told you, You will be the shepherd of my people Israel. You will be the leader of my people Israel. So there at Hebron, David made a covenant before the Lord with all the elders of Israel. And they anointed him king of Israel, just as the Lord had promised through Samuel. Then David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, or Jebus, as it used to be called, where the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land, were living. The people of Jebus taunted David, saying, You'll never get in here. But David captured the fortress of Zion, which is now called the city of David. David had said to his troops, Whoever is first to attack the Jebusites will become the commander of my armies. And Joab, the son of David's sister Zeruiah, was first to attack, so he became the commander of David's armies. David made the fortress his home, and that is why it is called the city of David. He extended the city from the supporting terraces to the surrounding area, while Joab rebuilt the rest of Jerusalem. And David became more and more powerful, because the Lord of Heaven's armies was with him. These are the leaders of David's mighty warriors. Together with all Israel, they decided to make David their king, just as the Lord had promised concerning Israel. Here is the record of David's mightiest warriors, the first was Jashabim the Hakmonite, who was leader of the three, the mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 300 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar son of Dodai, 
a descendant of Ahor. He was with David when the Philistines gathered for battle at Padamim and attacked the Israelites in a field full of barley. The Israelite army fled. But Eliezer and David held their ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord saved them by giving them a great victory. Once when David was at the rock near the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. God forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benaiah son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kebzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed only with a club, he killed an Egyptian warrior who was seven and a half feet tall and who was armed with a spear as thick as a weaver's beam. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three. And David made him captain of his bodyguard. David's mighty warriors also included Asahel, Joab's brother. Elhanan son of Dodo from Bethlehem. Shammah from Herod. Helez from Pelan. Ira son of Ikesh from Tico. Abizer from Anathoth. Sibakai from Husha. Zalman from Ahoa. Maharai from Netapha. Helade son of Bana from Netapha. Ithai son of Ribai from Gibeah, in the land of Benjamin. Benaiah from Pirathon. Hurai from near Nahaligash. Abialban from Araba. Asmaveth from Bahurim. Eliaba from Shalban. The sons of Jashan from Jizan. Jonathan son of Shaji from Harar. Ahiam son of Sharar from Harar. Eliphal son of Uar. Hefer from Akira. Ahijah from Pelan. Hezro from Carmel. Parai son of Ezbai. Joel, the brother of Nathan. Mibhar son of Hagri. Zelek from Ammon. Naharai from Birath, the armor-bearer of Joab son of Zeruiah. Ira from Jadar. Garab from Jadar. Uriah the Hittite. Zabad son of Alei. Adina son of Sheza, the Reubenite leader who had thirty men with him. Hanan son of Maka. Joshaphat from Mithna. Uzziah from Ashtaroth. Shama and Jeel, the sons of Hotham, from Aror. Jediel son of Shimri. Joha, his brother, from Tiz. Eliel from Mahava. Jeribai and Joshavia, the sons of Elnam. Ithma from Moab. Eliel and Obed. Jajel from Zobah. 
The following men joined David at Ziklag while he was hiding from Saul's son of Kish. They were among the warriors who fought beside David in battle. All of them were expert archers, and they could shoot arrows or sling stones with their left hand as well as their right. They were all relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. Their leader was Ahazer son of Shema from Gibeah, his brother Josh was second in command. These were the other warriors, Jeziel and Pelet, sons of Asmaveth. Baraka. Jehu from Anathoth. Ishmaeah from Gibeon, a famous warrior and leader among the thirty. Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, and Josabad from Gedera. Eluzai, Jeremoth, Bealiah, Shemariah, and Shephatiah from Hareth. Elkanah, Ishia, Azrael, Jozer, and Jashabim, who were Korahites. Joela and Zebediah, sons of Jerahem from Geder. Some brave and experienced warriors from the tribe of Gad also defected to David while he was at the stronghold in the wilderness. They were expert with both shield and spear, as fierce as lions and as swift as deer on the mountains. Ezer was their leader. Obadiah was second. Eliab was third. Mishmana was fourth. Jeremiah was fifth. Atai was sixth. Eliel was seventh. Johanan was eighth. Elzabad was ninth. Jeremiah was tenth. Macbani was eleventh. These warriors from Gad were army commanders. The weakest among them could take on a hundred regular troops, and the strongest could take on a thousand. These were the men who crossed the Jordan River during its seasonal flooding at the beginning of the year and drove out all the people living in the lowlands on both the east and west banks. Others from Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. David went out to meet them and said, If you have come in peace to help me, we are friends. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies when I am innocent, then may the God of our ancestors see it and punish you. Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, the leader of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David. We are on your side, son of Jesse. Peace and prosperity be with you. And success to all who help you. For your God is the one who helps you. So David let them join him, and he made them officers over his troops. Some men from Manasseh defected from the Israelite army and joined David when he set out with the Philistines to fight against Saul. But as it turned out, the Philistine rulers refused to let David and his men go with them. After much discussion, they sent them back, for they said, It will cost us our heads if David switches loyalties to Saul and turns against us. Here is a list of the men from Manasseh who defected to David as he was returning to Ziklag, Adna, Josabad, Gedeel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zilathai. Each commanded 1,000 troops from the tribe of Manasseh. They helped David chase down bands of raiders, for they were all brave and able warriors who became commanders in his army. Day after day more men joined David until he had a great army, like the army of God. These are the numbers of armed warriors who joined David at Hebron. They were all eager to see David become king instead of Saul, just as the Lord had promised. From the tribe of Judah, there were 6,800 warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Simeon, there were 7,100 brave warriors. 
From the tribe of Levi, there were 4,600 warriors. This included Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron, who had 3,700 under his command. This also included Zadok, a brave young warrior, with 22 members of his family who were all officers. From the tribe of Benjamin, Saul's relatives, there were 3,000 warriors. Most of the men from Benjamin had remained loyal to Saul until this time. From the tribe of Ephraim, there were 20,800 brave warriors, each highly respected in his own clan. From the half-tribe of Manasseh west of the Jordan, 18,000 men were designated by name to help David become king. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. From the tribe of Zebulun, there were 50,000 skilled warriors. They were fully armed and prepared for battle and completely loyal to David. From the tribe of Naphtali, there were 1,000 officers and 37,000 warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Dan, there were 28,600 warriors, all prepared for battle. From the tribe of Asher, there were 40,000 trained warriors, all prepared for battle. From the east side of the Jordan River, where the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh lived, there were 120,000 troops armed with every kind of weapon. All these men came in battle array to Hebron with the single purpose of making David the king over all Israel. In fact, everyone in Israel agreed that David should be their king. They feasted and drank with David for three days, for preparations had been made by their relatives for their arrival. And people from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. Vast supplies of flour, fig cakes, clusters of raisins, wine, olive oil, cattle, sheep, and goats were brought to the celebration. There was great joy throughout the land of Israel. David consulted with all his officials, including the generals and captains of his army. Then he addressed the entire assembly of Israel as follows, If you approve and if it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send messages to all the Israelites throughout the land, including the priests and Levites in their towns and pasturelands. Let us invite them to come and join us. It is time to bring back the Ark of our God, for we neglected it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to this, for the people could see it was the right thing to do. So David summoned all Israel, from the Sheer Brook of Egypt in the south all the way to the town of Lebohamath in the north, to join in bringing the Ark of God from kiriath Jearim. Then David and all Israel went to Bala of Judah, also called kiriath Jearim, to bring back the Ark of God, which bears the name of the Lord who is enthroned between the cherubim. They placed the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it from Abinadab's house. Uzzah and Ahio were guiding the cart. David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the Arkansas. Then the Lord's anger was aroused against Uzzah, and he struck him dead because he had laid his hand on the Arkansas. So Uzzah died there in the presence of God. David was angry because the Lord's anger had burst out against Uzzah. He named that place Perez Uzzah, which means, to burst out against Uzzah, as it is still called today. David was now afraid of God, and he asked, 
how can I ever bring the ark of God back into my care? So David did not move the ark into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. The ark of God remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he owned. Then King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David, along with cedar timber, and stonemasons and carpenters to build him a palace. And David realized that the Lord had confirmed him as king over Israel and had greatly blessed his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. Then David married more wives in Jerusalem, and they had more sons and daughters. These are the names of David's sons who were born in Jerusalem, Shammua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elplet, Noga, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they mobilized all their forces to capture him. But David was told they were coming, so he marched out to meet them. The Philistines arrived and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim. So David asked God, Should I go out to fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied, Yes, go ahead. I will hand them over to you. So David and his troops went up to Baal-perazim and defeated the Philistines there. God did it. David exclaimed. He used me to burst through my enemies like a raging flood. So they named that place Baal-perazim, which means, the Lord who bursts through. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, so David gave orders to burn them. But after a while the Philistines returned and raided the valley again. And once again David asked God what to do. Do not attack them straight on, God replied. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, go out and attack. That will be the signal that God is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. So David did what God commanded, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread everywhere, and the Lord caused all the nations to fear David. David now built several buildings for himself in the city of David. He also prepared a place for the Ark of God and set up a special tent for it. Then he commanded, No one except the Levites may carry the Ark of God. The Lord has chosen them to carry the Ark of the Lord and to serve Him forever. Then David summoned all Israel to Jerusalem to bring the Ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. This is the number of the descendants of Aaron, the priests, and the Levites who were called together. From the clan of Kohath, 120, with Uriel as their leader. From the clan of Merari, 220, with Isaiah as their leader. From the clan of Gershon, 130, with Joel as their leader. From the descendants of Eliza Fan, 200, with Shemaiah as their leader. From the descendants of Hebron, 80, with Eliel as their leader. From the descendants of Uzziel, 112, with Ammonadab as their leader. Then David summoned the priests, Zadok and Abiathar, and these Levite leaders, Uriel, Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Ammonadab. He said to them, You are the leaders of the Levite families. You must purify yourselves and all your fellow Levites, so you can bring the Ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. Because you Levites did not carry the ark the first time, the anger of the Lord our God burst out against us. We failed to ask God how to move it properly. So the priests and the Levites purified themselves in order to bring the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to Jerusalem. Then the Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with its carrying poles, just as the Lord had instructed Moses. 
David also ordered the Levite leaders to appoint a choir of Levites who were singers and musicians to sing joyful songs to the accompaniment of harps, lyres, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed Heman son of Joel along with his fellow Levites, Azaph son of Berechiah, and Ethan son of Keshiah from the clan of Merari. The following men were chosen as their assistants, Zechariah, Jaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Benaiah, Messiah, Mattathiah, Eliphelahu, Mekhnia, and the gatekeepers, Obadidim and Jeel. The musicians Heman, Azaph, and Ethan were chosen to sound the bronze cymbals. Zechariah, Aziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Messiah, and Benaiah were chosen to play the harps. Mattathiah, Eliphelahu, Mekniah, Obadidim, Jeel, and Azaziah were chosen to play the lyres. Kenaniah, the head Levite, was chosen as the choir leader because of his skill. Berechiah and Elkanah were chosen to guard the Arkansas. Shebaniah, Joshaphat, Nethanel, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eliezer, all of whom were priests, were chosen to blow the trumpets as they marched in front of the Ark of God. Obadidim and Jehiah were chosen to guard the Ark. Then David and the elders of Israel and the generals of the army went to the house of Obadidim to bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant up to Jerusalem with a great celebration. And because God was clearly helping the Levites as they carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David was dressed in a robe of fine linen, as were all the Levites who carried the ark, and also the singers, and Kenaniah the choir leader. David was also wearing a priestly garment. So all Israel brought up the ark of the Lord's covenant with shouts of joy, the blowing of rams' horns and trumpets, the crashing of cymbals, and loud playing on harps and lyres. But as the Ark of the Lord's Covenant entered the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. When she saw King David skipping about and laughing with joy, she was filled with contempt for him. They brought the Ark of God and placed it inside the special tent David had prepared for it. And they presented burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. When he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave to every man and woman in all Israel a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. David appointed the following Levites to lead the people in worship before the Ark of the Lord, to invoke his blessings, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Azaph, the leader of this group, sounded the cymbals. Second to him was Zechariah, followed by Jeel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obadidim, and Jeel. They played the harps and lyres. The priests, Benaiah and Jehaziel, played the trumpets regularly before the Ark of God's Covenant. On that day David gave to Azaph and his fellow Levites this song of thanksgiving to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him, yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for His strength. Continually seek Him. Remember the wonders He has performed. His miracles, and the rulings He has given. You children of His servant Israel. You descendants of Jacob, His chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His justice is seen throughout the land. Remember His covenant forever the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This is the covenant he made with Abraham, and the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree. 
and to the people of Israel as a never-ending covenant. I will give you the land of Canaan as your special possession. He said this when you were few in number. A tiny group of strangers in Canaan. They wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. Yet he did not let anyone oppress them. He warned kings on their behalf. Do not touch my chosen people. And do not hurt my prophets. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory He deserves. Bring your offering and come into His presence. Worship the Lord in all His holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before Him. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Let the heavens be glad, and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout His praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For He is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. Cry out, Save us, O God of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations so we can thank your holy name, and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting, and all the people shouted Amen, and praised the Lord. David arranged for Asaph and his fellow Levites to serve regularly before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, doing whatever needed to be done each day. This group included Obed-Edom, son of Jeduthun, Hosea, and sixty-eight other Levites as gatekeepers. Meanwhile, David stationed Zadok the priest and his fellow priests at the tabernacle of the Lord at the place of worship in Gibeon, where they continued to minister before the Lord. They sacrificed the regular burnt offerings to the Lord each morning and evening on the altar set aside for that purpose, obeying everything written in the law of the Lord, as he had commanded Israel. David also appointed Heman, Jeduthun, and the others chosen by name to give thanks to the Lord, for his faithful love endures forever. They used their trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments to accompany their songs of praise to God. And the sons of Jeduthun were appointed as gatekeepers. Then all the people returned to their homes, and David turned and went home to bless his own family. When David was settled in his palace, he summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of the Lord's covenant is out there under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Do whatever you have in mind, for God is with you. But that same night God said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord has declared, You are not the one to build a house for me to live in. I have never lived in a house, from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. My home has always been a tent, moving from one place to another in a tabernacle. Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israel's leaders, the shepherds of my people. I have never asked them, why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar house? Now go and say to my servant David, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies has declared, 
I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on the earth. And I will provide a homeland for my people Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they've done in the past. Starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel. And I will defeat all your enemies, furthermore, I declare that the Lord will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and join your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple, for me. And I will secure his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my favor from him as I took it from the one who ruled before you. I will confirm him as king over my house and my kingdom for all time, and his throne will be secure forever. So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said in this vision. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my family, that you have brought me this far? 17 And now, O God, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. You speak as though I were someone very great, O Lord God. What more can I say to you about the way you have honored me? You know what your servant is really like. For the sake of your servant, O Lord, and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known. O Lord, there is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. What other nation on earth is like your people Israel? What other nation, O God, have you redeemed from slavery to be your own people? You made a great name for yourself when you redeemed your people from Egypt. You performed awesome miracles and drove out the nations that stood in their way. You chose Israel to be your very own people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord, I am your servant, do as you have promised concerning me and my family. May it be a promise that will last forever. And may your name be established and honored forever so that everyone will say, The Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, is Israel's God. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. O oh my God, I have been bold enough to pray to you because you have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him, a dynasty of kings. For you are God, O oh Lord. And you have promised these good things to your servant. And now, it has pleased you to bless the house of your servant, so that it will continue forever before you. For when you grant a blessing, O Lord, it is an eternal blessing. After this, David defeated and subdued the Philistines by conquering Gath and its surrounding towns. David also conquered the land of Moab, and the Moabites who were spared became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. David also destroyed the forces of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, when Hadadezer marched out to strengthen his control along the Euphrates River. David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 charioteers, and 20,000 foot soldiers. He crippled all the chariot horses except enough for 100 chariots. When Arameans from Damascus arrived to help King Hadadezer, David killed 22,000 of them. Then he placed several army garrisons in Damascus, the Aramean capital, and the Arameans became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. So the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. David brought the gold shields of Hadadezer's officers to Jerusalem. Along with a large amount of bronze from Hadadezer's towns of Teba and Cun. 
Later Solomon melted the bronze and molded it into the great bronze basin called the sea, the pillars, and the various bronze articles used at the temple. When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed the entire army of King Hadadezer of Zobah, he sent his son Joram to congratulate King David for his successful campaign. Hadadezer and Toy had been enemies and were often at war. Joram presented David with many gifts of gold, silver, and bronze. King David dedicated all these gifts to the Lord, along with the silver and gold he had taken from the other nations, from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Philistia, and Amalek. Abishai son of Zeruiah destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subjects. In fact, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel and did what was just and right for all his people. Joab son of Zeruiah was commander of the army. Jehoshaphat son of Ahalud was the royal historian. Zadok son of Ahitub and Ahimelech son of Abiathar were the priests. Sariah was the court secretary. Benaiah son of Jehoiada was captain of the king's bodyguard and David's sons served as the king's chief assistants. Some time after this, King Naash of the Ammonites died, and his son Hanan became king. David said, I am going to show loyalty to Hanan because his father, Naash, was always loyal to me. So David sent messengers to express sympathy to Hanan about his father's death, but when David's ambassadors arrived in the land of Ammon, the Ammonite commanders said to Hanan, Do you really think these men are coming here to honor your father? No. David has sent them to spy out the land so they can come in and conquer it. So Hanan seized David's ambassadors and shaved them, cut off their robes at the buttocks, and sent them back to David in shame. When David heard what had happened to the men, he sent messengers to tell them, Stay at Jericho until your beards grow out, and then come back. For they felt deep shame because of their appearance. When the people of Ammon realized how seriously they had angered David, Hanan and the Ammonites sent 75,000 pounds of silver to hire chariots and charioteers from Aram Naharaim, Aramaka, and Zobah. They also hired 32,000 chariots and secured the support of the king of Maka and his army. These forces camped at Mediba, where they were joined by the Ammonite troops that Hanan had recruited from his own towns. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all his warriors to fight them. The Ammonite troops came out and drew up their battle lines at the entrance of the city, while the other kings positioned themselves to fight in the open fields. When Joab saw that he would have to fight on both the front and the rear, he chose some of Israel's elite troops and placed them under his personal command to fight the Aramines in the fields. He left the rest of the army under the command of his brother Abishai, who was to attack the Ammonites. If the Arameans are too strong for me, then come over and help me, Joab told his brother. And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will help you. Be courageous. Let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. May the Lord's will be done. When Joab and his troops attacked, the Arameans began to run away. And when the Ammonites saw the Arameans running, they also ran from Abishai and retreated into the city. Then Joab returned to Jerusalem. The Arameans now realized that they were no match for Israel, so they sent messengers and summoned additional Aramean troops from the other side of the Euphrates River. These troops were under the command of Shobach, the commander of Hadadezer's forces. When David heard what was happening, he mobilized all Israel, crossed the Jordan River, and positioned his troops in battle formation. Then David engaged the Arameans in battle, and they fought against him. 
But again the Arameans fled from the Israelites. This time David's forces killed 7,000 charioteers and 40,000 foot soldiers, including Shobach, the commander of their army. When Hadadezer's allies saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they surrendered to David and became his subjects. After that, the Arameans were no longer willing to help the Ammonites. In the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, Joab led the Israelite army in successful attacks against the land of the Ammonites. In the process he laid siege to the city of Rabbah, attacking and destroying it. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Then David went to Rabbah and removed the crown from the king's head, and it was placed on his own head. The crown was made of gold and set with gems, and he found that it weighed seventy-five pounds. David took a vast amount of plunder from the city. He also made slaves of the people of Rabbah and forced them to labor with saws, iron picks, and iron axes, that is how David dealt with the people of all the Ammonite towns. Then David and all the army returned to Jerusalem. After this, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. As they fought, Sibekai from Husha killed Saf, a descendant of the giants, and so the Philistines were subdued. During another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan son of Jair killed Lami, the brother of Goliath of Gath. The handle of Lami's spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. In another battle with the Philistines at Gath, they encountered a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all, who was also a descendant of the giants. But when he defied and taunted Israel, he was killed by Jonathan, the son of David's brother Shermaiah. These Philistines were descendants of the giants of Gath, but David and his warriors killed them. Satan rose up against Israel and caused David to take a census of the people of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Take a census of all the people of Israel, from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north, and bring me a report so I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord increase the number of his people a hundred times over. But why, my lord the king, do you want to do this? Are they not all your servants? Why must you cause Israel to sin? But the king insisted that they take the census, so Joab traveled throughout all Israel to count the people. Then he returned to Jerusalem and reported the number of people to David. There were 1,100,000 warriors in all Israel who could handle a sword, and 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include the tribes of Levi and Benjamin in the census because he was so distressed at what the king had made him do. God was very displeased with the census, and he punished Israel for it. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt for doing this foolish thing. Then the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, This is what the Lord says, I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments, and I will inflict it on you. So Gad came to David and said, These are the choices the Lord has given you. You may choose three years of famine, three months of destruction by the sword of your enemies, or three days of severe plague as the angel of the Lord brings devastation throughout the land of Israel. Decide what answer I should give the Lord who sent me. I'm in a desperate situation. David replied to Gad. But let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, and seventy thousand people died as a result. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But just as the angel was preparing to destroy it, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop! 
That is enough. At that moment the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Araunah the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with his sword drawn, reaching out over Jerusalem. So David and the leaders of Israel put on burlap to show their deep distress and fell face down on the ground. And David said to God, I am the one who called for the census. I am the one who has sinned and done wrong. But these people are as innocent as sheep, what have they done? O Lord my God, let your anger fall against me and my family, but do not destroy your people. Then the angel of the Lord told Gad to instruct David to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Araunah the Jebusite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him through Gad. Arauna, who was busy threshing wheat at the time, turned and saw the angel there. His four sons, who were with him, ran away and hid. When Arauna saw David approaching, he left his threshing floor and bowed before David with his face to the ground. David said to Arauna, Let me buy this threshing floor from you at its full price. Then I will build an altar to the Lord there, so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my lord the king, and use it as you wish, Barana said to David. I will give the oxen for the burnt offerings, and the threshing boards for wood to build a fire on the altar, and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give it all to you. But King David replied to Arauna, No, I insist on buying it for the full price. I will not take what is yours and give it to the Lord. I will not present burnt offerings that have cost me nothing. So David gave Arauna six hundred pieces of gold in payment for the threshing floor. David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And when David prayed, the Lord answered him by sending fire from heaven to burn up the offering on the altar. Then the Lord spoke to the angel, who put the sword back into its sheath. When David saw that the Lord had answered his prayer, he offered sacrifices there at Araunah's threshing floor. At that time the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar of burnt offering that Moses had made in the wilderness were located at the place of worship in Gibeon. But David was not able to go there to inquire of God, because he was terrified by the drawn sword of the angel of the Lord. Then David said, this will be the location for the temple of the Lord God and the place of the altar for Israel's burnt offerings. So David gave orders to call together the foreigners living in Israel, and he assigned them the task of preparing finished stone for building the temple of God. David provided large amounts of iron for the nails that would be needed for the doors and the gates and for the clamps, and he gave more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided innumerable cedar logs, for the men of Tyre and Sidon had brought vast amounts of cedar to David. David said, My son Solomon is still young and inexperienced. And since the temple to be built for the Lord must be a magnificent structure, famous and glorious throughout the world, I will begin making preparations for it now. So David collected vast amounts of building materials before his death. Then David sent for his son Solomon and instructed him to build a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel. My son, I wanted to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God, David told him. But the Lord said to me, you have killed many men in the battles you have fought. And since you have shed so much blood in my sight, you will not be the one to build a temple to honor my name. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace. I will give him peace with his enemies in all the surrounding lands. His name will be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel during his reign. He is the one who will build a temple to honor my name. 
He will be my son, and I will be his father. And I will secure the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you and give you success as you follow his directions in building the temple of the Lord your God. And may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding, that you may obey the law of the Lord your God as you rule over Israel. For you will be successful if you carefully obey the decrees and regulations that the Lord gave to Israel through Moses. Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or lose heart. I have worked hard to provide materials for building the temple of the Lord, nearly 4,000 tons of gold, 40,000 tons of silver, and so much iron and bronze that it cannot be weighed. I have also gathered timber and stone for the walls, though you may need to add more. You have a large number of skilled stonemasons and carpenters and craftsmen of every kind. You have expert goldsmiths and silversmiths and workers of bronze and iron. Now begin the work, and may the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to assist Solomon in this project. The Lord your God is with you, he declared. He has given you peace with the surrounding nations. He has handed them over to me, and they are now subject to the Lord and his people. Now seek the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that you can bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and the holy vessels of God into the temple built to honor the Lord's name. When David was an old man, he appointed his son Solomon to be king over Israel. David summoned all the leaders of Israel, together with the priests and Levites. All the Levites who were thirty years old or older were counted, and the total came to thirty-eight thousand. Then David said, From all the Levites, twenty-four thousand will supervise the work at the temple of the Lord. Another six thousand will serve as officials and judges. Another four thousand will work as gatekeepers, and four thousand will praise the Lord with the musical instruments I have made. Then David divided the Levites into divisions named after the clans descended from the three sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The Gershonite family units were defined by their lines of descent from Libni and Shimi, the sons of Gershon. Three of the descendants of Libni were Jehiel, the family leader, Zetham, and Joel. These were the leaders of the family of Libni. Point three of the descendants of Shimi were Shelomoth, Haziel, and Haran. Four other descendants of Shimi were Jehoth, Ziza, Jush, and Bariah. Jehoth was the family leader, and Ziza was next. Jush and Bariah were counted as a single family because neither had many sons. Four of the descendants of Kohath were Amram, Bizar, Hebron, and Uzziel. The sons of Amram were Aaron and Moses. Aaron and his descendants were set apart to dedicate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices in the Lord's presence, to serve the Lord, and to pronounce blessings in his name forever. As for Moses, the man of God, his sons were included with the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. The descendants of Gershom included Shabuel, the family leader. Eliezer had only one son, Rehabiah, the family leader. Rehabiah had numerous descendants. The descendants of Azar included Shelemith, the family leader. The descendants of Hebron included Jeria, the family leader, Maria, the second, Jehaziel, the third, and Jechamim, the fourth. The descendants of Uzziel included Micah, the family leader, and Ishia, the second. The descendants of Merari included Mali and Mushi, the sons of Mali were Eliezer and Kish. Eliezer died with no sons, only daughters. 
His daughters married their cousins, the sons of Kish. Three of the descendants of Mushi were Mali, Eder, and Jerimoth. These were the descendants of Levi by clans, the leaders of their family groups, registered carefully by name. Each had to be twenty years old or older to qualify for service in the house of the Lord. For David said, The Lord, the God of Israel, has given us peace, and he will always live in Jerusalem. Now the Levites will no longer need to carry the tabernacle and its furnishings from place to place. In accordance with David's final instructions, all the Levites twenty years old or older were registered for service. The work of the Levites was to assist the priests, the descendants of Aaron, as they served at the house of the Lord. They also took care of the courtyards and side rooms, helped perform the ceremonies of purification, and served in many other ways in the house of God. They were in charge of the sacred bread that was set out on the table, the choice flour for the grain offerings, the wafers made without yeast, the cakes cooked in olive oil, and the other mixed breads. They were also responsible to check all the weights and measures. And each morning and evening they stood before the Lord to sing songs of thanks and praise to Him. They assisted with the burnt offerings that were presented to the Lord on Sabbath days, at new moon celebrations, and at all the appointed festivals. The required number of Levites served in the Lord's presence at all times, following all the procedures they had been given. And so, under the supervision of the priests, the Levites watched over the tabernacle and the temple and faithfully carried out their duties of service at the house of the Lord. This is how Aaron's descendants, the priests, were divided into groups for service. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father, and they had no sons. So only Eliezer and Ithamar were left to carry on as priests. With the help of Zadok, who was a descendant of Eliezer, and of Ahimelech, who was a descendant of Ithamar, David divided Aaron's descendants into groups according to their various duties. Eliezer's descendants were divided into sixteen groups and Ithamar's into eight, for there were more family leaders among the descendants of Eliezer. All tasks were assigned to the various groups by means of sacred lots so that no preference would be shown, for there were many qualified officials serving God in the sanctuary from among the descendants of both Eliezer and Ithamar. Shemaiah son of Nethanel, a Levite, acted as secretary and wrote down the names and assignments in the presence of the king, the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech son of Abiathar, and the family leaders of the priests and Levites. The descendants of Eliezer and Ithamar took turns casting lots. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib. The second lot fell to Judiah. The third lot fell to Haram. The fourth lot fell to Seorim. The fifth lot fell to Malkijah. The sixth lot fell to Majamin. The seventh lot fell to Hakaz. The eighth lot fell to Abijah. The ninth lot fell to Jeshua. The tenth lot fell to Shechaniah. The eleventh lot fell to Eliashib. The twelfth lot fell to Jachim. The thirteenth lot fell to Huppah. The fourteenth lot fell to Jeshabib. The fifteenth lot fell to Bilgah. The sixteenth lot fell to Immer. The seventeenth lot fell to Hezer. The eighteenth lot fell to Hapitzes. The nineteenth lot fell to Pethahiah. The twentieth lot fell to Jehezkel. The twenty-first lot fell to Jachin. The twenty-second lot fell to Gamal. The twenty-third lot fell to Deliah. The twenty-fourth lot fell to Maziah. Each group carried out its appointed duties in the house of the Lord according to the procedures established by their ancestor Aaron in obedience to the commands of the Lord, the God of Israel. 
These were the other family leaders descended from Levi, from the descendants of Amram, the leader was Shabul. From the descendants of Shabul, the leader was Jediah. From the descendants of Rehabiah, the leader was Ishia. From the descendants of Azar, the leader was Shelemith. From the descendants of Shelemith, the leader was Jehoth. From the descendants of Hebron, Jeria was the leader, Maria was second, Jehaziel was third, and Jechamim was fourth. From the descendants of Uziel, the leader was Micah. From the descendants of Micah, the leader was Shemir. Along with Ishia, the brother of Micah. From the descendants of Ishia, the leader was Zechariah. From the descendants of Merari, the leaders were Mali and Mushi. From the descendants of Josiah, the leader was Bino. From the descendants of Merari through Josiah, the leaders were Bino, Shoam, Zachar, and Ibri. From the descendants of Mali, the leader was Eliezer, though he had no sons. From the descendants of Kish, the leader was Jeremiel. From the descendants of Mushi, the leaders were Mali, Eder, and Jeremoth, these were the descendants of Levi in their various families. Like the descendants of Aaron, they were assigned to their duties by means of sacred lots, without regard to age or rank. Lots were drawn in the presence of King David, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the family leaders of the priests and the Levites. David and the army commanders then appointed men from the families of Azaph, Heman, and Jeduthun to proclaim God's messages to the accompaniment of lyres, harps, and cymbals. Here is a list of their names and their work. From the sons of Azaph, there were Zachar, Joseph, Nethaniah, and Asarela. They worked under the direction of their father, Azaph, who proclaimed God's messages by the king's orders. From the sons of Jeduthun, there were Gedaliah, Ziri, Jeshea, Shimi, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six in all. They worked under the direction of their father, Jeduthun, who proclaimed God's messages to the accompaniment of the lyre, offering thanks and praise to the Lord. From the sons of Heman, there were Bukiah, Matania, Uziel, Shubael, Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedalti, Romamtiezer, Joshbakasha, Malothi, Hothar, and Mahaziath. All these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer, for God had honored him with fourteen sons and three daughters. All these men were under the direction of their fathers as they made music at the house of the Lord. Their responsibilities included the playing of cymbals, harps, and lyres at the house of God. Azaph, Jeduthun, and Heman reported directly to the king. They and their families were all trained in making music before the Lord, and each of them, 288 in all, was an accomplished musician. The musicians were appointed to their term of service by means of sacred lots, without regard to whether they were young or old, teacher or student. The first lot fell to Joseph of the Azaph clan and twelve of his sons and relatives. The second lot fell to Gedaliah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The third lot fell to Zachar and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fourth lot fell to Ziri and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fifth lot fell to Nethaniah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The sixth lot fell to Bukiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The seventh lot fell to Asarela and twelve of his sons and relatives. The eighth lot fell to Jeshea and twelve of his sons and relatives. The ninth lot fell to Matania and twelve of his sons and relatives. The tenth lot fell to Shimi and twelve of his sons and relatives. The eleventh lot fell to Uziel and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twelfth lot fell to Hashabiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. 
the thirteenth lot fell to Shubael and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fourteenth lot fell to Mattathiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The fifteenth lot fell to Jeremoth and twelve of his sons and relatives. The sixteenth lot fell to Hananiah and twelve of his sons and relatives. The seventeenth lot fell to Joshbakasha and twelve of his sons and relatives. The eighteenth lot fell to Hanani and twelve of his sons and relatives. The nineteenth lot fell to Malothi and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twentieth lot fell to Eliatha and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-first lot fell to Hothar and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-second lot fell to Gedalti and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-third lot fell to Mahaziath and twelve of his sons and relatives. The twenty-fourth lot fell to Romamtiezer and twelve of his sons and relatives. These are the divisions of the gatekeepers, from the Korahites, there was Meshalemia son of Kore, of the family of Abiasaph. The sons of Meshalemia were Zechariah, the oldest, Gedeel, the second, Zebediah, the third, Jathmiel, the fourth, Elam, the fifth, Jehohanan, the sixth, and Elihoanai, the seventh. The sons of Obedidim, also gatekeepers, were Shemaiah, the oldest, Jehazabad, the second, Joah, the third, Sacher, the fourth, Nethanel, the fifth, Amiel, the sixth, Issachar, the seventh, and Pulathai, the eighth. God had richly blessed Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom's son Shemaiah had sons with great ability who earned positions of great authority in the clan. Their names were Othni, Rephael, Obed, and Elzabad. Their relatives, Elihu and Semachiah, were also very capable men. All of these descendants of Obed-Edom, including their sons and grandsons, sixty-two of them in all, were very capable men, well qualified for their work. Meshalemia's eighteen sons and relatives were also very capable men. Hosea, of the Merari clan, appointed Shimri as the leader among his sons, though he was not the oldest. His other sons included Hilkiah, the second, Tebaliah, the third, and Zechariah, the fourth. Hosea's sons and relatives, who served as gatekeepers, numbered thirteen in all. These divisions of the gatekeepers were named for their family leaders, and like the other Levites, they served at the house of the Lord. They were assigned by families for guard duty at the various gates, without regard to age or training, for it was all decided by means of sacred lots. The responsibility for the east gate went to Meshalemia and his group. The north gate was assigned to his son Zechariah, a man of unusual wisdom. The south gate went to Obed-Edom, and his sons were put in charge of the storehouse. Shuppim and Hosea were assigned the west gate and the gateway leading up to the temple. Guard duties were divided evenly. Six Levites were assigned each day to the east gate, four to the north gate, four to the south gate, and two pairs at the storehouse. Six were assigned each day to the west gate, four to the gateway leading up to the temple, and two to the courtyard. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers from the clans of Korah and Merari. Other Levites, led by Ahijah, were in charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries of the gifts dedicated to the Lord. From the family of Libni in the clan of Gershon, Jehiel was the leader. The sons of Jehiel, Zetham and his brother Joel, were in charge of the treasuries of the house of the Lord. These are the leaders that descended from Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel. From the clan of Amram, Shabul was a descendant of Gershom son of Moses. He was the chief officer of the treasuries. His relatives through Eliezer were Rehabiah, Jeshaiah, Joram, 
Zikri, and Shelomoth. Shelomoth and his relatives were in charge of the treasuries containing the gifts that King David, the family leaders, and the generals and captains and other officers of the army had dedicated to the Lord. These men dedicated some of the plunder they had gained in battle to maintain the house of the Lord. Shelomoth and his relatives also cared for the gifts dedicated to the Lord by Samuel the seer, Saul son of Kish, Abner son of Neh, and Joab son of Zeruiah. All the other dedicated gifts were in their care, too. From the clan of Azar came Kenaniah. He and his sons were given administrative responsibilities over Israel as officials and judges. From the clan of Hebron came Hashabiah. He and his relatives, 1,700 capable men, were put in charge of the Israelite lands west of the Jordan River. They were responsible for all matters related to the things of the Lord and the service of the king in that area. Also from the clan of Hebron came Jeriah, who was the leader of the Hebronites according to the genealogical records. In the fortieth year of David's reign, a search was made in the records, and capable men from the clan of Hebron were found at Jazer in the land of Gilead. There were 2,700 capable men among the relatives of Jeria. King David sent them to the east side of the Jordan River and put them in charge of the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were responsible for all matters related to God and to the king. This is the list of Israelite generals and captains, and their officers, who served the king by supervising the army divisions that were on duty each month of the year. Each division served for one month and had 24,000 troops. Jashabim son of Zabdiel was commander of the first division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the first month. He was a descendant of Perez and was in charge of all the army officers for the first month. Dodai, a descendant of Ahoa, was commander of the second division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the second month. Mikloth was his chief officer. Benaiah son of Jehoiada the priest was commander of the third division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the third month. This was the Benaiah who commanded David's elite military group known as the Thirty. His son Amizabad was his chief officer. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was commander of the fourth division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the fourth month. Asahel was succeeded by his son Zebediah. Shammah the Israelite was commander of the 5th division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 5th month. Ira son of Ikesh from Tiko was commander of the 6th division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 6th month. Helez, a descendant of Ephraim from Pelan, was commander of the 7th division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 7th month. Sibakai, a descendant of Zira from Husha, was commander of the 8th division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 8th month. Abizer from Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin was commander of the 9th division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the 9th month. Maharai, a descendant of Zira from Nedepha, was commander of the 10th division of 24,000 troops, which was on duty during the tenth month. Benaiah from Pyrathon in Ephraim was commander of the eleventh division of twenty-four thousand troops, which was on duty during the eleventh month. Helaid, a descendant of Othniel from Nedepha, was commander of the twelfth division of twenty-four thousand troops, which was on duty during the twelfth month. The following were the tribes of Israel and their leaders. Reuben Eliezer son of Zikri, Simeon, Shephatiah son of Maka, Levi, Hashabiah son of Kemuel, Aaron, the priests, 
Zadok, Judah, Elihu, a brother of David, Issachar, Omri son of Michael, Zebulun, Ishmael son of Obadiah, Naphtali, Jeremoth son of Azrael, Ephraim, Hosei son of Azaziah, Manasseh, West, Joel son of Padiah, Manasseh in Gilead, East, Ido son of Zechariah, Benjamin, Jajel son of Abner, Dan, Azrael son of Jerahim. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. When David took his census, he did not count those who were younger than twenty years of age, because the Lord had promised to make the Israelites as numerous as the stars in heaven. Joab son of Zeruiah began the census but never finished it because the anger of God fell on Israel. The total number was never recorded in King David's official records. Asmaveth son of Adiel was in charge of the palace treasuries, Jonathan son of Uzziah was in charge of the regional treasuries throughout the towns, villages, and fortresses of Israel. Ezri son of Kalub was in charge of the field workers who farmed the king's lands. Shimi from Ramah was in charge of the king's vineyards, Zabdi from Shepham was responsible for the grapes and the supplies of wine. Balhanan from Geda was in charge of the king's olive groves and sycamore fig trees in the foothills of Judah, Josh was responsible for the supplies of olive oil. Shitri from Sharon was in charge of the cattle on the Sharon plain, Shaphat son of Adlai was responsible for the cattle in the valleys. Obil the Ishmaelite was in charge of the camels, Jediah from Maranoth was in charge of the donkeys. Jazais the Hagrite was in charge of the king's flocks of sheep and goats, all these officials were overseers of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a wise counselor to the king, a man of great insight, and a scribe. Jehiel the Hakmonite was responsible for teaching the king's sons. Ahithophel was the royal advisor. Hushai the Archite was the king's friend. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada son of Benaiah and by Abiathar. Joab was commander of the king's army. David summoned all the officials of Israel to Jerusalem, the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of the army divisions, the other generals and captains, the overseers of the royal property and livestock, the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the other brave warriors in the kingdom. David rose to his feet and said, My brothers and my people. It was my desire to build a temple where the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, God's footstool, could rest permanently. I made the necessary preparations for building it. But God said to me, You must not build a temple to honor my name, for you are a warrior and have shed much blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, has chosen me from among all my father's family to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen the tribe of Judah to rule, and from among the families of Judah he chose my father's family. And from among my father's sons the Lord was pleased to make me king over all Israel. And from among my sons, for the Lord has given me many, he chose Solomon to succeed me on the throne of Israel and to rule over the Lord's kingdom. He said to me, Your son Solomon will build my temple and its courtyards, for I have chosen him as my son, and I will be his father. And if he continues to obey my commands and regulations as he does now, I will make his kingdom last forever. So now, with God as our witness, and in the sight of all Israel, the Lord's assembly, I give you this charge. Be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God, so that you may continue to possess this good land and leave it to your children as a permanent inheritance. And Solomon, my son, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. 
worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So take this seriously. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple as his sanctuary. Be strong, and do the work. Then David gave Solomon the plans for the temple and its surroundings, including the entry room, the storerooms, the upstairs rooms, the inner rooms, and the inner sanctuary, which was the place of atonement. David also gave Solomon all the plans he had in mind for the courtyards of the Lord's temple, the outside rooms, the treasuries, and the rooms for the gifts dedicated to the Lord. The king also gave Solomon the instructions concerning the work of the various divisions of priests and Levites in the temple of the Lord. And he gave specifications for the items in the temple that were to be used for worship. David gave instructions regarding how much gold and silver should be used to make the items needed for service. He told Solomon the amount of gold needed for the gold lampstands and lamps, and the amount of silver for the silver lampstands and lamps, depending on how each would be used. He designated the amount of gold for the table on which the bread of the presence would be placed and the amount of silver for other tables. David also designated the amount of gold for the solid gold meat hooks used to handle the sacrificial meat and for the basins, pitchers, and dishes, as well as the amount of silver for every dish. He designated the amount of refined gold for the altar of incense. Finally, he gave him a plan for the Lord's chariot, the gold cherubim whose wings were stretched out over the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. Every part of this plan, David told Solomon, was given to me in writing from the hand of the Lord. Then David continued, Be strong and courageous, and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. He will see to it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. The various divisions of priests and Levites will serve in the temple of God. Others with skills of every kind will volunteer, and the officials and the entire nation are at your command. Then King David turned to the entire assembly and said, My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. The work ahead of him is enormous, for the temple he will build is not for mere mortals, it is for the Lord God himself. Using every resource at my command, I have gathered as much as I could for building the temple of my God. Now there is enough gold, silver, bronze, iron, and wood, as well as great quantities of onyx, other precious stones, costly jewels, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. And now, because of my devotion to the temple of my God, I am giving all of my own private treasures of gold and silver to help in the construction. This is in addition to the building materials I have already collected for His holy temple. I am donating more than 112 tons of gold from Ophir and 262 tons of refined silver to be used for overlaying the walls of the buildings. And for the other gold and silver work to be done by the craftsmen. Now then, who will follow my example and give offerings to the Lord today? Then the family leaders, the leaders of the tribes of Israel, the generals and captains of the army, and the king's administrative officers all gave willingly. For the construction of the temple of God, they gave about 188 tons of gold, 10,000 gold coins, 375 tons of silver, 675 tons of bronze, and 3,750 tons of iron. They also contributed numerous precious stones, which were deposited in the treasury of the house of the Lord under the care of Jehiel, a descendant of Gershon. 
the people rejoiced over the offerings, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord, and King David was filled with joy. Then David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people are made great and given strength. O our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and who are my people, that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. We are here for only a moment, visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. O Lord our God, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor your holy name comes from you. It all belongs to you. I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. You know I have done all this with good motives, and I have watched your people offer their gifts willingly and joyously. O Lord, the God of our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. Give my son Solomon the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decrees, and to do everything necessary to build this temple, for which I have made these preparations. Then David said to the whole assembly, Give praise to the Lord your God. And the entire assembly praised the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they bowed low and knelt before the Lord and the King. The next day they brought one thousand bulls, one thousand rams, and one thousand male lambs as burnt offerings to the Lord. They also brought liquid offerings and many other sacrifices on behalf of all Israel. They feasted and drank in the Lord's presence with great joy that day and again they crowned David's son Solomon as their new king. They anointed him before the Lord as their leader, and they anointed Zadok as priest. So Solomon took the throne of the Lord in place of his father, David, and he succeeded in everything, and all Israel obeyed him. All the officials, the warriors, and the sons of King David pledged their loyalty to King Solomon. And the Lord exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel, and he gave Solomon greater royal splendor than any king in Israel before him. So David son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. He reigned over Israel for forty years, seven of them in Hebron and thirty-three in Jerusalem. He died at a ripe old age, having enjoyed long life, wealth, and honor. Then his son Solomon ruled in his place. All the events of King David's reign, from beginning to end, are written in the record of Samuel the seer, the record of Nathan the prophet, and the record of Gad the seer. These accounts include the mighty deeds of his reign and everything that happened to him and to Israel and to all the surrounding kingdoms.